Demon Slayer, Season 4, Episode 5. Love how short time. I would say we need to save her somehow, but I don't know if she needs saving. She needs a husband or, or a wife. Why? I don't know. I was excited last episode. I'm starting to distrust. It's too good to be true. Food training? What's the catch? With your mouth. Oh, she's a real renaissance girl. She knows all the, all the foreign cuisines. I remember my first pancake. Oh, is Tanjiro becoming her doll? <laughs> is that what it is? We're gonna play dress up. Not sure how this is related to Hashira training. Tanjiro, all body, no heart. You must set your heart ablaze with love. Oh yeah, isn't she Rengoku's student? I wonder if there was something there between Kinroji and Rengoku. Might've been more than a teacher. Ballet, okay, I get it. That makes sense, actually. This makes sense. She's very fancy. I bet you can get a lot out of this. It's different. You're like pushing your boundaries. I have thought about this, like, just given the law of marginal learning, where with a lot of things you experience the, the biggest surge in growth from zero to non-zero, you know, the first couple lessons, even just knowing what something is, there is really no substitute for specialization. However, there is something cool about dabbling at the entry level to intermediate level of like a huge spectrum of things. Like try everything once, you know? Like how much would you understand about the world, your mind and your body, et cetera, et cetera, if you just tried like everything there was to try once, you know, or for some short interval. Like try ballet, try yoga, try running, try heavy weights, try calisthenics, try basketball, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just athletic activity. There are a huge range of, of categories art, music, mental pursuits, creative pursuits, social activities. A person's first trip out of their own country is significant. I've realized that a lot of people who have lived in multiple places abroad, if you ask them their favorite place, it'll typically be their first. It's one of those things where the rationale will be an arm of the feeling rather than the feeling being a result of the reasons. So people will love places I've hated for the same reasons I love the places that I love, if you get what I'm saying. And I think that's partly because of that massive feeling of growth and discovery you get when you first live abroad, which you then come to associate with that place. This is not a life philosophy you hear talk about often. We focus much, much more on picking one thing and mastering it or a couple things. And that's probably for good reason. I think that unlocks things that this strategy never will. Nevertheless, I think this is something to consider and might actually be really great for a certain kind of person. There's a lot of ways you can grow, put yourself in situations where unexpected things can scale, you know, going from that zero category to that something is happening category. Things that seem scattershot and random at first sometimes join and create a pattern. You will learn a lot by this sort of survey approach to activity and life. And the variety can be really interesting and rewarding. Well, Tanjiro might, I mean, conceivably he can get more out of this than, you know, the sword fighting, because he's so good at sword fighting already. He's never done ballet or whatever this is. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna suck. Yeah. I've done this exact thing, that exact stretch with someone else. This is gonna suck. Uh, maybe he's really flexible already. He is not flexible already. Okay. When I eventually went back to high school after dropping out, I went to one that wasn't traditional. It was like you did internships instead of classes. And the last credit I needed to graduate high school was the gym credit of all things. And super lucky, but there was a, there was a Shaolin monk who had immigrated, defected to the US and it opened an intermediary gym in Manhattan while he was building a, a temple upstate. And so as my gym credit, I got to take this class. And that was one of the things we did, the stretches. I thought I was athletic. I thought I was in good shape. Nothing prepared me for that, that class. In fact, I think I did it for a whole semester. I never even got to learn anything because I never got past like the basic drills and stretches. The way it worked was you have to master the fluidity, the range of motion, and the endurance before you, before he would even take a glance at you. Kamado Tanjiro, ore wa omae wo matte ita. Maybe we get two for one this episode. I even ate demons, episode five. Okay. Oh, did he pass? Lopash already? Is he limbered up already? What's that one stretch? Jealousy. Ooh, we got a crush. Ooh, we got a crush. He feels a little bit dark for her, though. This training is... He's gonna make this personal. <laughs> well, I can imagine if you're not really secure, it would be date, it would be tough to date someone like Kanroji. She's just so naturally giving up her personality. Even Tanjiro can pick up on it. Oh, oh, this is what we're doing? What's in it for the, the grunts? The crime of being born to be meat shields. Yeah, basically. I thought the other guy was the mean one. Wow, I feel Tanjiro's crash personally. I was already for a Love Hunter episode. <laughs> I was looking forward to it. So we get Torture Dungeon with Smiles McGee over here. 
For some reason, I thought it was going to be like mechanical and move. Yeah, you can hit him. <laughs> They're used to it. Too slow. I could see this coming in really useful in like a huge demon war. He was waiting. We just abandoned the exercise for a personal fight. Oh, they're fighting through them. He would never. He would never hit one of them. It also seems to fit his power really well, What the preview we've seen of it, where like, it's not linear. He has to navigate through space with his snake thing. He seems like a precision expert, precision master. Right, right, that's his thing. Oh, we can do it even with the wooden thing. Can you learn this? Can we learn this? It's pretty cool. <laughs> He's got it in him. We... Oh, whoops. Sanjo's pretty damn accurate, but usually doesn't have meat shields in front of him. He took a loss. This seems like the first time he's actually struggled. We found a weakness, besides stretching. He's gonna attack it. And they had a pretty easy physical day, all things considered. Why are they tired? Is it just water? Hot water. So I'm really not the kind of person to care about material things. I live a very modest life, as we all probably have figured out from my YouTube backgrounds, if you can call them that. Recently, I've realized there is one material thing I need that is the reason I must become ultra wealthy, and that is an in-house combination sauna. Sauna with a cold bath over here and a hot bath over here. For all my thinking about myself and my life, for all my effort, few things do as much for me as coffee, workout, cold bath, hot bath. It's magic. It's unreal. <laughs> to his credit, I mean, like he obviously is not that fond of Tanjiro, but this is really productive and it doesn't seem unfair, even if it's painful. <laughs> And it's sufficiently challenging, which doesn't mean he's not enjoying Tanjiro's pain, but... <laughs> Imagine these just, just... This is their day for one week. They're just gonna be hung up here. You've been here before, it's just... The fear is a little bit of an obstacle here. There you go. This is definitely gonna come in handy. It's really cool. He doesn't really leave you much room. Oh, cuts. He bleeds, sort of. <laughs> no love lost. I was about to say, I literally, on the tip of my tongue, was going to say, well, after this, he can't hate him that much. He must respect him. Nope. Maybe he does respect him, but he definitely hates him. That was cold. Karoji is clearly not the one for Tanjiro. But neither is Igoro, my gut feeling. Rengoku, he's not. My god, that's a difficult standard. If Rengoku is the standard, Karoji is doomed. We're all doomed. Tanjiro just has a way of just attracting, being around the loudest people. Yeah, speaking of which. <laughs> the timing of that. Exactly. Everything is loud. Except for Nezuko, who like, doesn't make any noise. I thought, yeah, you know, I thought they might be training together. But Zenitsu and uh, Inusuke are around, but they're still not really around. Or die, yeah. He chose death. So innocent. Yeah, we got old beef. Interesting that... Okay, yeah, I was wondering if that was there. Right, right. Okay. In a weird way, it's a relief to know that's there. But it's so funny that in that moment, it's so clear that Tanjiro's energy coming into this is all wrong. That was pressure that had to be vented. Oh, we're getting three in one episode. <laughs> This guy is, in some ways, the other side to what we just saw. Well, Igoro is sort of flashy, curved, liquid. He's more simple, straight, fundamental, it feels. Though he's also win, so... Oof, with the fist. Oof, backslap the hell out of him. Oh. Okay. We found a problem to meddle in. This is a sign of a sibling fight? It would be, wouldn't it? 
兄貴に謝りたくて。頑張れ、ゲンヤ。ゲンヤ、負けた。いや、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、私は今、Oh god. That was. intent to blind. This just became a real fight. And Tundra, you know, has so much emotional sway with this dude. Is he like hulking out? Is that what it is? Is that what the veins are? Oh, he's hulking out. I wonder what advantages and disadvantages that brings. Oh, he's still talking. Just take his eyes. Just take his eyes. Wow, I love that Tundra's using this sort of logical argument. Pick a lane. Is he your brother or not your brother? Do you care or not care? Make up your mind. Obviously, there's a huge letdown here. Can you do something to him? Since it's Demon Slayer, maybe it's something like he's responsible for their parents' death, or it's one of those things where he's actually not responsible for his parents' deaths, but he feels guilty, like his brother saved him instead of his parents, something like that. But if I had to guess, based on zero evidence, the real anger is not directed at Genya, but directed at himself. Genya is just the face. It's a convenient target and outlet, which a lot of the times is the case in family drama. It's self-loathing and insecurity. Taken out on someone else. Typically convenient, weak targets. This is true. How many upper ranks have you defeated? Then show me. This is a menace. The stakes of this just skyrocketed. I mean, the rules have been broken. You can step in now. You don't need to let this be one on one, although Tantra would want it to be one on one. Oh, there it is. There's the real Tanjiro. The way they are drawing and animating all of these enormous bruises. Seems like he's breaking style a little bit in his emotion. Maybe he has two modes. Why don't you get an adult? Get the Earth, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on now. Good, there you go. Wow, these grunts. The meat shield's really just elevated in my mind. Will this lead to respect? Oh, it's not complete. The wind hatcher didn't get any discipline? We're trying to blind Genya and attack a student? Whoa, this is an odd moment in the show. But this is going to come back around. Tanjiro failing? Wow. There was a chance for this to get resolved. That would have been the, the clear and obvious choice. But like, the bad blood just deepened. I don't know what... I'm tr still trying to think. It's so well done. You just feel it. You feel that it can't go well. From the onset. Their first moment in this episode. He just doesn't want there to be anything good with Tanjiro. He gets something out of hating Tanjiro. Tanjiro cannot win that with earnesty. The game is rigged against him. Huh. I've also done this. <gasps> yes, I'm waiting for this guy. I've been most excited for him. Yes, this is gonna be so cool. I can feel it. He just has a different presence, different energy. This episode was wild. Like, we basically took our time through the first couple people, the first couple of Hashira that we already knew. It was sort of like a, hello again, you know? <laughs> Here's this training thing that you'll quickly pass and move on. And then we get Kanroji, Snake Hashira, Wind Hashira, back to back with a very significant event in Tanjiro's life, not being able to fix someone's problems. Creating an enemy sort of among friends is one of the first instances of division in this otherwise overall very harmonious, positive training arc towards a common purpose. And then to end it with a preview of the Earth Hashira, very exciting. I've been made aware that there are a lot of Buddhist references, influences in the show. Maybe this character is a chance to explore that more, more directly. <laughs> You know what, Tanjiro? Do it. Do it. Make a pass to Karmoji. Just stick the knife in. One eye see the past, with one eye see the future. With one eye I'm looking at Kanroji, with the other eye I'm watching Tanjiro. Yeah, the strongest. He emerged pretty quickly in this arc as the de facto leader. I wonder what his relationship was like with Rengoku, being what sort of feel like two pillars of this institution and like really centered, focused people. The Earth Astra is seen often as 
crying, which until this point, I haven't really taken as abundant emotion, but more like a deep connection, probably very empathetic, very like in tune with the heightened sense of people in life, which you sometimes experience in moments, I think, where you sort of become raw to the full gravity and weight of people and things and events. Typically in life, you have a little bit of a buffer or a filter because that is important or helps you navigate, but like it's always there. You can always access it if you really focus on it. And maybe some people just train living in that state. It's like the book, The Giver. Speaking of the spectrum, it's exciting thinking that this might be more of a mental training than a physical one.